Hey everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew. I'm joined by Tyler. How you doing, Tyler? Doing good. Uh, I apologize for the mic. For whatever reason, this is in a different position than normal, so I probably come across as much hotter than normal, uh, but we'll figure that out in editing. That's what it's for. Anyways, uh, so what have you been doing in Linux this week? Uh, I mean, to be honest, it th- this week has very much been a uh, relax kind of uh, week. Uh, I'm treating it sort of like uh, the eye of the storm week. I'm going to have to start diving deep into Blender and get um, just progress my skills in Blender quite a bit. And I've been procrastinating and I've sort of just decided give it the full week, get all of this procrastination out. That way I feel like crap and I feel like I need to be productive. Uh, so that way next week I'll just, I'll just hit the studying and uh, getting better even harder. So I've just been bracing, playing around with DWM and uh, also diving deep into my Steam library because I have way too many games that I'm never going to actually play. You've been playing some games, huh? Well, I have not been playing games. That won't surprise you at all. <laughs> um, no, you've probably been torturing yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't even. I, I, I didn't even open Steam because I know because WASD is not in the right place anymore. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> so W is where it's always been, and A is where it's always been, but S has moved over one, and D has moved over two. So it'd be really weird, right? Because R and T would be in the middle. It's stuck up. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you haven't been following me on Twitter or on the community page, oh, I've switched, forgot to switch back to the, the main scene here. But uh, if you have, if you haven't been following me, I switched to the Colmac keyboard layout. Now, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. You, you don't ever need to know. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the, the promise of Colmac is that all the letters that you use the most are under your four home row fingers. Every single one of them. So A, R, S, T, N, E, I, and O. Okay? And then everything else that you use um, semi-frequently is directly underneath those. So B, K, X, C, uh, F, and P, and so on and so forth. Right? So you move your fingers around as little as possible. And there are several keyboard... um, layouts that do the same thing but colmac is the one that is kind of the least different from qwerty it's supposedly the easiest one for qwerty users to actually use because it doesn't move the paste keys around so zx cv stay in the same place qw stays in the same place so um those things on like the outsides of the keyboard don't move around so it's easier to you're really only training your fingers for a few new key bu- keys but oh my god God, man. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so, for, so first of all, I will say this. This is day four. I am. It's night and day how much faster I am today than I was the first day I tried. So, oh, I'm I am sure. I'm, I'm making progress, and I'm sure that next week when we talk, I'll be even way better than I am now, um, as long as I stick with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. There's been there's been several times in the last four days where I said oh, fuck this I'm going back to QWERTY but I mm-hmm. I, I, I promised myself that I'm going to give it at least thirty days. Uh, so so you have at least changed around your keys right to yeah, match I've, the I've layout. Sw- yep the, the the keys have been moved around on this and on the keyboard behind me and on my phone. So I even switched to it on my Android phone so that it, I'm I'm not using a QWERTY keyboard at all. Um. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. <laughs> so so really typing is the least of my worries. Just like mm-hmm. like, like so I type for a living, right? So it's been a mm-hmm. it's been a problem, but <laughs> I haven't been very productive the last four days, but I've been working on it. But the uh, the biggest issues I've been having are in two places. One with my key bindings in my window managers, right? So I haven't been window manager hopping. I just changed my key bindings in DWM so that they're a little bit easier to do in DWM. So I like moving the keyboard, moving the windows and stuff around used to be HJKL, right? So I moved it mm-hmm. to NEI and O. Okay, because, that makes sense. Because that's where HJK and L used to be. Well, kind of. I'm NEI and O are actually shifted over one, so it's it would have been uh, J, K, L, and semicolon, which is, you know, the home row keys. I, I mean, like, lo, let's be honest. The I3 guys would tell you that that's how it's supposed to be. Right. So, I, I mean, if I you're mean, using touch typing, that's where your fingers are supposed to be. You're not supposed to – It's 
the the HJKL is actually shifted over one row, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I, I've, I've changed that, and it's okay. I'm getting slowly used to the key bindings in DWM. It's Vim that's fucking me up, man. Because <laughs> because I is now what J used to be. So oh. getting into insert mode is just <laughs> mind boggling and bad. So uh, I, I just haven't had a chance to do it. There's a so I've gone through and I've been able to go through and, and rebind. So H J K and L are now N E I and O. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't had a chance to go through and rebind for insert mode and stuff like that, and, and I don't know if I want to. Um, Understandable. Uh, mainly because if I if in a month I say, well, you know what, good experiment, bro, move on, <laughs> going back to mm-hmm. QWERTY. Uh, I don't know if I want to go back through and and have to relearn Vim again. Uh, <laughs> so I, I I I think I am going to go through and rebind for insert mode, but I don't think I'm going to rebind any of the other Vim keys. So uh, th- things like uh, uh, DD and P and stuff like that, those are going to stay where they are. Uh, even though the keys are in different places, uh, so Vim is the thing that's messing me up. And honestly, of all the letters that I've, I've been trained, so I've been using a, a website called KeyBR, and it trains your muscle memories for your, for your keys to actually learn how to touch type. And I'm still on the home row, <laughs> like like I'm still on the home <laughs> row. I haven't made it far far. It's not even the whole home row. It's just R S T N E and I that I've been training with and L. And L's in the upper upper row, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been I've been training with those, and it's just uh, I'm not like I'm not fast, but I'm, it feels like I'm making progress. It's but it's man, it's a mess. I don't even remember what made me think I wanted to do this anymore. <laughs> like <laughs> like there have been times in the last few days where I'm like, Matt, why did you think that this was a good idea? Well, I guess my main question would be, um, hope, hopefully you stick with it, but my question would be, if you do stick with it, at, at the very least, do you plan on doing a video talking about whether or not the um, learning curve is worth the benefits of, of having a keyboard layout that's more centric and more ergonomic? Yeah, I will be making a video on it, whether I, I'm successful or not. Um, okay. Probably after 30 days, maybe after if I'm if, if I decide at 30 days I'm gonna that I'm gonna keep going, I will probably push that out to 60 days because they take to tell you it takes you two to three months to get back to where you were with QWERTY. I don't think I'm gonna get there in 60 days because I was at 120 words per minute with QWERTY. Whew, all right. So uh, I like I don't think. And right now I'm at 15 words per minute with Colmax, so I got a bit of ways to go. But granted, that's 10 words per minute faster than I was four days ago. So, um, and the thing is, I know where the keys are now. Like I can tell you exactly where all the keys are now. It's just a matter of reminding myself where they are in my head without looking at the keyboard. Because and, and especially, man, the E is just driving me bonkers. Because the E went from one side of the keyboard all the way over to the other side of the keyboard and is and it's completely a different hand like it used to be where f is and now f now it's where uh k was <laughs> like like i never used the letter k why is e the most used letter in the language in the spot that i used the least it's really it, it's really messing with my mind so yeah so that's what i've been doing with linux i've also been still messing around with debian back there on my computer so, so mm-hmm. I can do that long-term review. I really like Debian. Like, I really, really, really? like it. Yeah. Um, I'm using BSPWM, and I really, really like BSPWM, too. I'm thinking about switching to BSPWM on this computer here. But I could see myself using Debian long-term. That's how good it is. Um, Dable, uh, d- ooh, d- Dable. Debian stable or uh, Debian testing? It's testing now. It started on okay. stable. I moved to Bullseye because it's very, very close to being the main thing, and I wanted to try the new stuff. Plus, I, in order to install Polybar, I had to be on testing. So, gotcha. Because um, uh, stable doesn't have Polybar in the repos. Uh, testing does. Gotcha. And uh, the only piece of software I've found that I can't get is alacrity like 
there's no way to get a lacquer down there without installing a PPA. And I'm re- the, the thing about that is I'm refusing to install anything with a PPA. <laughs> I'm just not doing it. Uh, like I will install something from a snap, sure, uh, if I have to. I don't want to, but I will. But I will not use your crappy PPA system. <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm calling that the 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 stupid AUR. <laughs> Because it's so bad. It's it, like it, technically the AUR and the PPA system are exact. You know, basically the same idea. Sort um, of, yeah. yeah. Community hosted repository. You know, basically the same. But the AUR just feels like it's one place where uh, you have several repositories for the PPA stuff. And like, mm-hmm. like I don't know what you're downloading on my computer. Like, exactly. Like, you yeah, know, like... it's going to be porn or, or <laughs> cryptocurrency nonsense or whatever. There's going to be at least one in there, you know, eventually. Yeah. All right. So anyways, that <laughs> I probably for the next three or four weeks, my adventures with Colmack will probably be one of the things we talk about because it's just going to be, it's going to be one of those things that's just is constantly on my mind. And it's kind of, the thing is, I, I bitch about how frustrating it's been, but it's been refreshing kind of to do something new. Like mm-hmm. this is something that I've never done before right and yeah it's hard and it's a pain in the ass but i kind of wake up in the morning like oh this is kind of cool it's kind of like learning how to use a computer all over again because Mm -hmm. i really have to truly think about every key press i do um the thing the one thing i'm gonna have to change though i'm gonna tell you this right now is i've been using super d to open up rofi forever i mean Mm -hmm. i think a lot of people use super d to open up rofi or d menu or whatever and Mm -hmm. uh i've got to change that because they're too far away from each other and I keep pressing S. Like, S is where D used to be. <laughs> and I keep doing that. So I think Super S is probably going to be my new Rofi menu thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm the weird person, but I, I'm i one of those who do, uh, like, Super and Enter is my terminal, and Super Shift Enter is for D menu or, like, any run launcher that I use. I, I've always had that, that set up. I don't know if that... Is it, like, have you I, seen other people do that? I don't think you're weird, but I... I I try to avoid three key presses. So on things that I use all the time, I want just two key pressers. I don't want to have to think about having to go through and do a third key press. So uh, I use Rofi and I use my Rofi uh, scripts all the time. So if I had to do do Super Shift C, (laughs) Super Shift C in order to go through and get my clipboard, uh, Clip D menu, Clip Menu D or whatever, uh, I that drive me nuts. So it's just Super C. And the emojis is super E, which is that's going to have to change too because that's <laughs> way hell and gone off the keyboard. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I've still got work to do. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Uh, it'll be it'll be it'll be interesting to see if this time next week I'm still saying, oh, it's an experience and it's an adventure. I'm probably either going to be saying, um, you know, it's just normal now, or I'm going to say, oh man, I'm just going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you know well so, i mean i i think the funny thing is is most likely as long as you're going to stick with it till like the end of at the very least the end of halfway through next week i have a feeling that you're going to come back and sit down and be like okay he here's what here's what it is i am proud to be at 30 words per per minute like for 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 most like people 30 words per minute is like the average standard and i think I think with, with switching over to a keyboard, the reason that it is even remotely interesting to anyone is you can you can be happy at those small milestones again as a you know person who's used a computer for a long time. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be pretty happy at thirty words per minute. I, really, I don't I don't really have a number in mind. I just want to not feel slow. You know what I mean? Because right now <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm hunting and pecking. And mm-hmm. I, I never want to feel this again. <laughs> you know, uh, I was talking. So there's another YouTuber. I don't. His name is Jan. I don't remember what his last name is. He's from Germany, I think. And he mm-hmm. does videos on keyboards. And uh, he did one on Colmac DH. And and that's basically where they move the. So they move D and H and replace where the K and the V is, I think. It's really weird because they don't want to. It basically keeps you from having to move your in, index fingers inwards. Uh, I don't really get it why that's a good thing, but everyone says that it's it feels better. Like no, I don't want to switch again. <laughs> yeah. Like, like everybody, everybody's like, well, why did you? Why didn't you just go full Colmac DH? For the first thing, uh, I don't even know how to switch it because Colmac DH is like a it's it's like an unsupported version of it. 
So mm-hmm. I don't know how I go about switching to it. But also, uh, like, I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> like, I'm not going to go yeah. through and change again. I, I, the only way I change is to go back to QWERTY. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the only way I foresee myself changing. Because there's another one out there called Workman that is kind of like this. And they say that it's better. Uh, but I didn't want to try that because Colmag, it changes a lot more. Um, now, what about Dvorak? Yeah, that one changes even way more than Workman. So there's so there's QWERTY oh, okay. and then there's Colmac. They're very similar in terms of where things are, or not in really similar, but more. It doesn't move nearly as much as say Colmac DH. And then there's Workman, which changes even more from QWERTY. And then there's Dvorak, where everything kind of shifts all over the damn place. Um, mm-hmm. It's completely I, different. Yeah, it's completely different. And I didn't, I didn't want to go that far, man. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I cop, I mean, everybody copies and pastes a lot, right? And mm-hmm. uh, I did not want to move the copy and paste keys. And, uh, yeah, your muscle memory. T- I mean, talk about just completely gone. Well, you yeah, you have that, nothing to fall back on. And at least with like the key bindings for DWM and stuff like that, I can change those. Changing the copy and paste key bindings, I don't even know how you'd go about doing that. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that, that stuff's hard coded into the operating system. I think. I mean, I, I don't think that's on a per application basis. I'm pretty sure that that's just something that's built into Linux. It's probably part of the core utils or something. I don't even know. I mean, yeah. I, I, I I would have no clue how about to, how to go about changing. I mean, I'm kind of curious now, but um, you know, it's it's definitely it's very weird. Um, anyway, so we 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 we've spent entirely too much time on my woes with the keyboard, but um. Add on top of that, I got up this morning, and for for whatever reason, the keyboard had forgotten that it was on Colmac, and it switched back to QWERTY. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know why that happened. It, it really dumb. This keyboard is stupid. For whatever reason, there's like a blinking green light, and whenever that happens, the keyboard just stops working. Like I don't understand it at all. It's like it's like, and it won't like it's supposed to be a Bluetooth keyboard, but it won't take a charge. And I don't understand why. It's really weird. Anyways, hmm. I have woes. Um, that and Discord keeps fro- freezing. Um, yeah, Discord's reason. been screwy for, for me for a while, too. And Telegram has been crashing. So, <laughs> I, I actually, I haven't installed. I haven't opened it in so long because literally when I, when, when I was trying to log into it, it would not let me log in. It would crash after I uh, had done the login on my phone. Instead yeah. of like logging in and showing stuff, just full crash. I think it's just for everybody. And, like, you think... Like, it's been a week now. you think that they would be fixing that shit. But, no. Ah, they got better things to do than fix their own program. Well, yeah. but no, like, no, we get, Like, you guys use Linux. I mean, there's, like, five of you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Go use Windows. <laughs> right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Absolutely. That. That's not even an option. I'm much no. more likely to go use WhatsApp than I am to... <laughs> To actually to switch to Windows. I mean, seriously, uh, I have WhatsApp installed on my phone. I still don't know why. Um, <laughs> anyways, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so. Uh, we're on Twitter at the LinuxCast. Uh, that's me tweeting about Colmac mostly these days. Uh, mm-hmm. You can also subscribe to all of our audio feeds and all that kind of stuff at the LinuxCast.org. Um, you can contact us via email. email the, I, I can't talk with a damn. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be one of those days. He was the tired one, by the way. He was the one over there yawning, and now I'm the one that can't talk. We, we pressed record, and I started yawning uncontrollably. And, and, and Matt lost his inability to speak English. Excellent. You can contact, well, thank you. You made me laugh enough to wake up. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you can contact us via email at email at the linuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can follow... Tyler, who goes by Zany on the internet, on YouTube and Odyssey. Both of those links will be in the video description below. I don't say the links because they're ugly links, and that's just the way it is. So go <laughs> definitely check out in the video description or in the podcast description and subscribe to him on both of those places. Even though Odyssey has been running really bad like, the last three or four days, it's been mm-hmm. so bad. And I, like sometimes, like not even like I'm like not even won't even load bad. Um, yeah, um, I will say uh, as of last night and this this morning using it, it is it does seem to be better. 
Uh, that may also just be for me because again it's been really finicky the past few yeah, days it was a little slow but it at least loaded for me this morning like because i went in there to check some comments but and they at least loaded uh, but it did take a long time they really need if, if they want to survive they're gonna have to fix that stuff because uh i'm actually surprised at how many big names you can find on odyssey like there's some big people on there but it's not gonna it doesn't matter who you can find on there if the damn service won't work anyways you can also subscribe yep. to us on youtube at youtube.com slash linuxcast where you'll find videos pretty much loaded up every single day uh coming up i got some a really good rant on screen tearing on saturday and I will be streaming something on Sunday night. I don't know what I'm going to be streaming on Sunday night. I still haven't chosen a topic. Maybe one YouTube, of those. YouTube. Can I just say, YouTube has really screwed me when it comes to seeing your notifications with your live streams. So many times, YouTube makes the time look like like the way they present it. Almost always, I see your notifications for a live stream, and I see the time, and I'm like. Okay, perfect. Set a reminder. And then, like, if it's a few hours from now, I'm like, where's my reminder? And then I go back and check, and it's for, like, two or three days out. I'm like, YouTube, stop getting my hopes up. Come on. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times I'll schedule them several days ahead of time. I'm probably messing around with a lot of people's hopes and dreams that way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just, just, just remember, it's Sunday night, every night, 6.30 your time, I stream. So mm-hmm. I don't know what the topic is going to be this week. I still haven't chosen one. Uh, it's not going to be a rising topic because I've I've done that quite a lot. Um, maybe I'll just sit there and do keyboard uh, key, key ty- typing tests the whole hour. I'd be down. I, I mean, I have to be honest. I, I really do like all of your rising streams. I honestly don't think you can do too many rising streams. Uh, well, see, I like the rising streams, but a lot of people don't like the rising streams. I don't know. I have a video actually that will go up today about how. Uh, I'm addicted to rising, so yeah, that's that video is already recorded and scheduled, and and it's on Patreon. So if you want to get some of those videos early, you can definitely subscribe on Patreon. Um, because I do, I have been doing really good on the early access stuff. Um, so anyways, my mind is just woo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in a position to actually talk about anything. So every week we go through and we choose. Uh, news items, one link each. So, Tyler, what was your news item of the week? Mine is uh, Garuda Desktop. Uh, they've, uh, well, the the whole article here is just more of talking about uh, Garuda and their unique look. And, um, I mean, they do go through and explain some stuff. Like, um, a, a lot of people don't really know. Like, Garuda, as far as I know, it defaults to Wayland. Um I'm pretty sure it defaults to Wayland. Um, and I know they're using Wayfire as their um, Wayland compositor, which um, is interesting. Um, but more more or less, the, the article goes through and breaks down a lot of their um, look. And you've got a lot of pictures for the people who aren't familiar with the, again, I'm, I'm going to have to call it unique look of Garuda. I have to ask you, do you like the look of this distribution? For someone else. Same. I know there's people out there that definitely like this look and really, really think it's unique. I, I mean, I do think it's unique. I don't but... know why they think that's unique, though. I don't... I mean, they stole that look off from Unix porn. You know that, right? Like, mm. Somebody else did that, that, that rice five years ago. And thought it was unique. Now it's just the same look that everybody uses. Those are the candy icon. That's candy icon, yeah. right? That's what it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why everybody thinks it's unique. Like everybody uses that icon. And it's like, other than El Capitan or whatever it's called, it's probably the <laughs> most popular icon set. Um, it's, a, it's actually the third on Gnome look. It oh, is right. one of the most popular icon sets out there in the wild. Right? So, I mean, it's like, <laughs> like this is, don't get me wrong, it looks fine. It's definitely. It, uh, whether the look, whether the look and feel is for me or not, the fact that they've gone through and actually spent some effort into customizing how it looks is actually good, um, mm-hmm. because a lot of distributions, uh, Debian, um, <laughs> <laughs> they just put. I mean, it's your uh, prerogative to install what desktop environment you have, but it comes from their repos, and all of their desktop environments look like stock desktop environments. So yep. GNOME forty looks like GNOME forty. 
XFC looks like it came from 1998, so it looks like it's XFC. You know, I love XFCE, but and if, if you if you look, so there's a there's a YouTube channel. I'm just pimping, pimping everybody's YouTube channel today, but there's a YouTube channel called Linux Scoop, I think, and all he does is go through and um, write stuff. Like it makes mm-hmm. him look. I mean, fantastically awesome. And some of the stuff he does with XFC, like, why why don't the XFCE people do this? Like, everybody would use XFCE then. Um, so I, I like the fact that Garuda has gone through and, uh, you know, put some effort into it. But calling it unique would really piss me off. Like, no, that's not unique. Look on Unix porn. There's 50 other things that look exactly like it. Mm-hmm. I, I think, to me, like... Like, when I say it's doing something unique, I think what it's doing is taking, like, a, a Ricer's, like, desktop, making it usable for everyone, and then just being like, hey, so if you're the type of person who you're interested in Linux, you need a solid foundation, but you're, like, what you're most interested about is customizing, here's a desktop that's already been heavily customized to to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I would say it's customized to look unique. Not that the theming is unique, but you're not going to find another distro. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I find more interesting about Garuda is that it uses the Zen kernel, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're always going to be on it kind of very much aimed towards a gaming kernel and trying to support as much hardware as possible and stuff like that. So if you if you have like top of the line hardware... Garuda would probably be a very good distribution for you because it does a lot of stuff for gaming. It also, like you said, uses Wayland, so you're going to have better support for high DPI displays and such like that. Um, So eh, the stuff that they've done underneath is actually much more interesting than the shocking uh, colors that they've chosen, right? So Yeah. um, Yeah. Because, I I mean, also, I'm glad that you said that because I don't know of any other distribution that actually... um, not just comes with the Zen kernel, but encourages the Zen kernel yeah. at all. I don't, um, the only one I know that makes it... So, like, Manjaro doesn't ship with the Zen kernel, but it makes it really easy to switch between kernels. So, uh, and I think there was a... I, I think it was Bodhi Linux that I tried has a... Uh, that's not an Arch-based distro, but it has a, a tool for switching to different Kernels. And those are the only two, and I might be wrong on the second one. It might have been a different one, uh, but it, those are the only two that kind of come close to being able to be very easy to get to a Zen kernel. If you just install Arch, you have to go look up a tutorial on how to switch to a kernel, right? Because I mean, like I wouldn't even know how to start doing it from like the command line. It's, so it's nice to have yeah. a tool. And this has this has uh, the Garuda tools or whatever that has uh, allows you to go through and change a whole bunch of stuff. So it's very interesting. Uh, speaking of that, since you're on Debian now, I would be very interested if down the, lo- down the line, this, this might be a video idea for you, but uh, figure out whether or not if it's super difficult to switch to a Zen kernel on Debian. I would be interested to know if that's difficult to do. I mean, I'm sure I know it, I know it could definitely be done. I just don't know how difficult it would be yeah. to get it done on Debian. I, that could be a video idea. I don't know how well it would do on that laptop back there because that, that laptop is old. Uh, um, yeah. So I don't know how well it would work, but when I'm I mean, it, it would probably work just as well. You just probably might not see any benefits whatsoever. Right. From it. Um. I, maybe, maybe when I'm done with the review, like shooting and stuff, uh, and I don't mind if I break it. You know, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, if it ends yeah. it breaks, and it doesn't matter. I'm done with. It. I'm gonna wipe it and go on to the mm-hmm. next thing, anyways. Um. Anyways, so yeah, Gerudo's cool. I, I feel like I've tried to install Garuda to do a review, but I couldn't get it to install on a virtual machine. They're very not for virtual machines. Uh, I don't know if it's because of Wayland, if it was because of ButterFS, but I, for whatever reason, I couldn't get ButterFS to work with... Because um, they, as far as I know, they use ButterFS by default as well. So uh, they're not as unique on that as, as it used to be. Like Now OpenSUSE uses ButterFS. Um, I think Fedora uses ButterFS. I mean, there's quite a few distros now that use ButterFS by default. And I'm using ButterFS on my main machine now. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Um, I haven't even noticed a difference. I mean, it's just every time I do an update, it does a snapshot in the background uh, before it does the update. That's literally, I mean, it literally takes five seconds. You don't even notice. Um, and if you need to go back, you just use Time Shift to go back. 
That's um, incredible. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, like I have noticed zero differences. Um, other than that, I just know it's back there, and it kind of makes me feel safer because I know if a if a update breaks, I can just hop back to a different uh, uh, a snapshot. Yeah. So I think Butterfest is kind of the future. Either that I know uh, uh, ZFS. I think it's ZFS. ZFS. The one that Z, Ubuntu is. Yeah, yeah, ZFS. Yeah. Um, I know that does D- depends something. on where you're from in the world. If it's right. Z or everybody, Z. everybody, like all the podcasts I use are from British people, so they always call it Z. So I've just gotten you know ZFS, mm-hmm. you know whatever. Um, but anyway, supposedly that has the same kind of functionality as Butterfest. I just don't know if it's as fleshed out. You know, I think it's more for servers. I don't know why I get that yeah. that uh, that thought in my head because maybe it's not even true. I don't even know. Okay, uh, yeah, Gruta looks cool. Uh, mm-hmm. If I weren't so uh, happy with Arco, maybe. <laughs> but the thing is, is I would go. I install Garuda and change everything. Right? I don't like the look, so yeah. I'd have to go through and I change the icon set and stuff, whatever. Um, now and at I know, that point, why even go Garuda? Right, I mean, I mean, you really have to want to use the underlying features like Butterfest and the Zen kernel for it to be worth it at that point. And for me, it really wouldn't because my hardware's older, and I don't, I don't think I would really benefit anything from the Zen kernel. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I don't know. All right, so my uh, news link of the week is DuckDuckGo has introduced email protection to hide your email and te- block testers. Now. Uh, the details behind this really don't matter to me whatsoever. I don't really care specifically how the service works. Uh, I, what I do care is for like the main main reason why I chose this one is because I wanted to make the comment of DuckDuckGo before you start branching out into you know other things. Make your search engine good. Um, okay. Full stop. Thank you. Just thank you. That is exactly what I was thinking reading this. I'm like, this would be cool, but the fact that I still have to resort to Google for quite a few searches is unacceptable. Just make your search and you're going, you know what this reeks of? This reeks of Mozilla. You know what I mean? (laughs) I mean, this is exactly what Mozilla does. Like Mozilla, stop doing other shit and make your browser good. You know what I mean? So... uh, Focus on one thing, perfect it, and then if you've done that, then you can move on to something else. Like, understand, no, 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 don't get me wrong, email protection is a huge deal. Like, protecting from phishing and scam attacks and all that kind of stuff, huge deal. But stay in your lane, DuckDuckGo, you know, and that's, you're not an email service, you're a, browser, you're a search engine, you know? Do that well. And my biggest problem with it, like I said, uh, sir, <laughs> like and like you said, DuckDuckGo majority of the time I use it, I have to research to you know with Google and for the search thing. Like every time I I, I say something bad about DuckDuckGo, every there will be somebody in the comments saying, uh, "Oh, I use DuckDuckGo and it does perfectly fine." And I think that that's probably true for people who are willing to scroll past the first page. Like you can find what you want to search for on DuckDuckGo if you are willing to search past that first page because it's probably there. Like DuckDuckGo probably did find what you were looking for. But See, I can't even confidently say that because I've gone to second pages and sometimes that stuff's not there. And I'm not, I don't know about you. You might be willing to go and dig through there. Oh, no, but I'm not willing to go past the first page. Like, like I, yeah. I'm one of the guys, I, the, the, the thing is like, Say what you will about Google. They know how to search. And if you're using an ad blocker, usually the thing you search for is the first thing on the search. Like, almost always, right? Even Mm -hmm. weird, esoteric uh, searches oftentimes are the first thing. And that's really hard for DuckDuckGo to compete with. I understand. Like, Mm -hmm. we understand being a privacy-focused browser where you can't go through and actually mine for data as much as you want to without pissing people off. It is hard. Like, I don't think anybody is saying what DuckDuckGo has tried to do uh, is easy. But uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean they should abandon the game and focus on something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm glad you said that because, like, the way I've been looking at this is sort of like through the lens of like a game developer. This reeks of feature creep. 
where like i mean if you really want to make a great game you you want to have like figure out your core your core needs your core features and then anything else other than that that's cool like sure you can write it down but you're not going to actually try and do it because to make that core game you can't keep adding on features you're not going to make a a browser like duck or a search engine like duckduckgo better when you're focusing on other crap that doesn't make the search engine better right because email has nothing to do with search engines uh mm-hmm. if they if they were adding a feature uh like i don't even know what feature they'd add literally anything that has to do with searching you know, to make it better by all means i mean sure make another product that would help you with search engine but this has nothing to do with that and it's really it, it, like, like uh, we're supposed to be talking about the link and like i said i the link for this will be in the video description i didn't want to talk about the thing basically let's just for a minute we'll just talk about it so basically mm-hmm. what they're going to do is it's an email protection feature that will be able allow you to be able to alias email and also remove any creepy email trackers that come with it so uh this basically will keep you from being tracked on the internet what does that have to do with search engines but moreover that sounds like a browser feature right yeah. i mean it sounds like a browser mm-hmm. matter of fact i think it is a browser plugin uh, I mean, so I mean, what? What exactly? I mean, it's just it just it's so out of left field. Like, it, like yes, it has to do with the internet, which is your general category, but so is porn, and you didn't go do porn either. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's it's really really odd, and I just like I want DuckDuckGo to be good, man. I want I so want to leave Google behind for everything. It, that has to do with search. I I just really really want to. I don't want to be searched. I don't, I don't want to be tracked and and all that stuff when I you know do my searches. But for that to be happen, you have to be decent. Like like mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfectly Google in order for me to use it a lot. It just has to be better than it is right now. Mm-hmm. And you're not gonna get there by doing this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and um, I mean the. The sad part is, is the the argument when it comes to this link is not is this a good like feature or good? Uh, I mean, I know they're not selling it, but product, and that I feel like that's what DuckDuckGo wants the the conversation to be like. This is a good product, but it's it's not the the conversation is completely elsewhere. Why do we have this? Well, I mean, and then add add on top of it is that the service that they're offering. It's an open source. Like, it's proprietary. So, uh, like, like, add on, on top of everything else, uh, it's not even open source. Like, I, I don't even... Uh, maybe that's not even something that's weird for DuckDuckGo. I don't... Like, I don't... Maybe DuckDuckGo doesn't even care about open source. It's possible. Maybe. You know, in, in which case, screw you guys. I wasn't going to use you anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm just, if you're going to be proprietary about it, I might as well just use Google. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I, then I don't know what you're doing. In the background, you could be taking my email. I mean, literally, if I'm my email and everybody's email has probably the most personal data you have available on the internet, right? I mean, everybody, you mm-hmm. know, bank emails, receipts from things you buy on the internet, whatever. I mean, it has the most personal data that you have available on the internet, and you're giving someone access to that email that isn't offering their service as an open source thing. So, I mean, you can actually look at the code and see that they're not shipping your data off to wherever. Uh, no, don't do that. that well, that's not a I good mean, idea. My response uh, for, for anybody who might be watching this and who's like working at DuckDuckGo, if your argument is going to be, hey, well, um, we are pri- like we, we, we may be proprietary, but we are truly privacy focused. Here's my argument to that. Google is privacy focused. Yeah, that's what they say, right? <laughs> exactly. We don't, we don't I mean, that's what they say. Because we know otherwise they sell your data. Now, we think that GitHub is very trustworthy, but how do we really know? Yeah. See, yeah. they might be really privacy focused in privately keeping the fact that they sell your data. Like, if you're proprietary, it's really hard for the community not to, to have any trust because they don't know. I mean that's like that's like the loan shark of your local town being like I don't get why people don't trust me. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. Like I'm such a friendly guy, you know. Yeah, like, I, I'm I mean, I give you money when you need it. Like you, you got money. It doesn't matter that I charge four hundred percent interest, and if you don't pay, I'm gonna break your legs. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let, let's let's move on to uh, the main topic, which is is federated social media the future? And I think we can uh, kind of add on to that. Is federated social media as it is right now any good? Um, mm-hmm. So those two questions are the things we're going to be talking about. So I will pass this on over to you. Do you first of all, do you use any of the federated social media things? I've tried it. I've tried it. I don't use it. Yeah, I think I'm in the same thing. Like I have a Mastodon thing. Like when Di- when Distro Tube did his video, like after he moved on to. He got kicked off at one server and created his own or whatever. I joined his instance. I think I've logged into it three times. I think I have like 30 followers over there, but I don't know what they're following me for because I, I go nowhere. I'm like, I follow me on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> right? so, You're even more dedicated than I am. I've logged into it once. <laughs> yeah, so, so Mastodon has definitely not been the thing, right? But there's also things like what Matrix is another federated thing, I think. Uh, no. And there's just mm-hmm. several of these things. So I think our use cases of those things is, have been very low. So uh, as it is right now, I think we both probably agree that federated social media is kind of bad, right? And it's not necessarily that the apps yeah. are bad. It's just that there's nobody there. I mean, what's good is a... a, a and, <laughs> well, there are... When it comes to Mastodon, there are, there are people there. The problem for me when it comes to, like, Mastodon and... Um, like decentralized social media in general, the only problem that it solves is um, centralized control and essentially like it's better at uh, stopping, you know, uh, or protecting free speech. And supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. And to me, the, the thing about, federated social media and, and social media in general. Like my problem with social media is not that it's a centralized service. My problem with social media is it's social media. Like being on a platform like, I mean, I was on Mastodon for quite a while before getting on DistroTube's um, um, server or whatever. And the people and the conversations that you can get into on Mastodon can be just as toxic and useless as Twitter. So to me, I don't really, to me, it's more of an argument of, I don't really use social media and I don't see a value in um, social media in general. Um, I, I, I hate to sound like one of those, like, I mean, like, or maybe possibly sound like a boomer. I don't know. But like, I, I think social media is not a good thing for most people. Um, something like Discord or like having like those smaller type communities where it's like you and maybe at the most like 100, 200 people that, you know, interact with each other on a very regular basis. That to me is, it makes a lot more sense than the wider social media where anybody is, is interacting with a lot of people, you're just much more likely to get crap. <laughs> yeah. Um, now see, I use social media and, uh, I used to be a big user of Facebook, right? So not necessarily like the personal stuff of Facebook, but Facebook groups where you kind of, you're, it's very much like a smaller community within Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even then, uh, in the last year or so, those groups have just been kind of going downhill in terms of participation because everybody feels like they're kind of just leaving Facebook, right? Mm. Uh, now, now, Twitter is something that I enjoy more, but mostly because it serves as a way for me to find information that people tweet out. So, like, uh, uh, you follow people who are more famous or whatever – and they tweet out things about their lives. And I'm not talking about, like, celebrities. I'm talking about, like, people in the Linux sphere or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that works for me quite a bit. And then for, like, the, the account for that I use for the Linux cast is just Linux-related stuff. So I ignore all the other fiffle-faffle on Twitter. I don't ever get into any of that stuff, right? So, uh, for, excuse me. I just burped. Uh, <laughs> uh, it could have been worse. Could have came out the other end. No. Um, mm-hmm. 
<laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, J- just be lucky you don't have a microphone like mine where it's hypersensitive and it would definitely pick something like that it up. Definitely. Is gonna, yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, so. I don't even remember what I was going to say before the, the thing happened. Uh, we were we were talking about uh, Twitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and he, like So the way I use Twitter is just very much uh, a, a centralized thing based on a few topics. Mm-hmm. Like f- for my main Twitter account, uh, at MTWB, by the way, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, for that for that account, I just follow people who enjoy fan fiction. I follow people who like the San Francisco, San Francisco Giants and people who like the Philadelphia Eagles. That's all I follow. That's all I pay mm-hmm. attention to. Uh, every once in a while, the people who tweet about the Giants or whatever will tweet out a political post, and I will ban them. Like I'll unfollow <laughs> them and block them because I don't want. The thing is, is I we get enough political shit uh, mm-hmm. elsewhere in the world, and I don't need that on my social media thing. So. Uh, uh, Unless I know you personally, uh, I'm just going to get rid of you. And if I do know you personally, I'm going to try as much to not know you anymore if you're mm-hmm. going to talk to me about politics. So uh, mm-hmm. now going back to the uh, the, the actual topic, uh, my problem with federated social media is that uh, while I go – while I do focus on a very narrow number of people on the social media networks that I use – that field is so much narrower on federated media, social media, in terms of actually the number of people in those fields. So it feels like it's much more of an echo chamber because there's only so many people that out there are... Tw- I mean, it's not so bad like in, on Mastodon because the number of people on Mastodon who also use Linux is actually pretty high. The percentage of people who use Linux and f- open source software is actually pretty high. Uh, but most of those people are just like me. They don't use Mastodon, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they they yep. have Mastodon things because it's something that if you if you support FOSS software, it's something you you know feels like you have to do. But yep. you don't actually use it. You use Twitter or you use you know whatever, or you use Mastodon to look at I don't know like say DistroTube like in, in his Mastodon page, and that's about it. Like you're more there to view content than you yeah. are to post content. Right. Exactly. It, and the the question then becomes, does that ever change, right? Because in order for federated social media to actually become the future, as I posited in the question that we're being asked, people actually have to use it. And and I'm not talking just about the FOSS community has to use it. I'm not just talking about the small, isolated, nerdy community. It has to be everyday people saying you want to want uh, I need to use something other than Twitter or Facebook or whatever and, and like for for example this you know when WhatsApp came out with their privacy policy late last year or whatever and people mm-hmm. were like I'd hate this privacy policy because they're gonna steal all of my data which you know they were already doing anyways without telling you about it so mm-hmm. uh, but everybody was like freaking the fuck out and like oh let's go use telegram and let's use signal so mm-hmm. it'd be int- <laughs> I for me personally, I think that it's going to, in order f- for federated social media to actually be, become more popular, the big social medias are really going to have to f- fuck up. And the thing is, nobody cares if yeah. Facebook. I mean, Twitter right? and Facebook have messed up, I mean, in, in an incalculable number of times. Right? And nobody leaves. People don't care. Yeah. Or, 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 or certain groups leave. So, like, when Facebook started banning. Uh, uh, social media or conservative uh, like groups and stuff like that, um, mainly because they can't stop saying, "Oh, hey, well, let's sh- shoot people," you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and then they think that's perfectly fine or whatever. But <laughs> you know, like, hey, you know what? I'm with you, man. I'm like, I can be conservative as conservative as the next person, but maybe don't put your murderous tendencies on the internet and yeah, expect like, to be okay with it. Free speech <laughs> protects a lot. It doesn't protect you. <laughs> protect you uh, just openly being like, I'm down for murder. Like, no, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so when that happened, when they started banning that, people moved over to MeWe, and like, like that's what my mom did because she she started. Uh, um, she got banned a couple times on Facebook for posting some Trump stuff. Um, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm glad we have family members that are alike. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just, it's just, it, as you get older, you get more conservative. It's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the way humans work. But she moved over to MeWe because MeWe is literally anarchy. Like, they, they don't move, mm-hmm. remove anything, right? And, I mean, first of all, what kind of fucking name is MeWe? Can we just hold yeah. on for a second? Like, that's just the, the, the dumbest <laughs> name in the history of names. But. Yeah, the, they don't remove anything, right? And mm-hmm. that's why a lot of people use it. And that's why Parler was so popular before, you know, and then they got kicked off because you can't promote you can't promote violence. It just turns out yeah. that that's just the thing that you can't do. And then you'll you'll say, well, oh, we weren't really doing that. We didn't mean that. Like, you can't even joke about that kind of stuff. I mean, I think that's the problem with federal uh, federated social media ever becoming the standard or the future of social media um it doesn't address the the problem with social media um because i let's just say that twitter and facebook just completely messed up and everybody started moving over over to mastodon if everybody was to come over to mastodon what's going to start happening well big instances driven by corporations will come up and they'll start getting like, even though you can have the option to be on the federated use other instances, it's just going to slowly become a more and more centralized service until it is essentially a centralized service, but just under the guise of being decentralized. Yeah. Well, I mean, all right. So the promise of, of a federated system is that it protects free speech and allows you to uh, use your instance, however you want to use it. That's the, that's the promise but really all it does is it moves takes the problem that twitter and facebook have which is moderation right that, that's their biggest pro- problem is that the way they moderate can seem unfair to some people and perhaps it is you know i'm, I'm not here to argue one way or the other uh but you have to understand that facebook has 2.5 billion people nobody no computer system in the entire world that has ever been created can can moderate that a number of people uh successfully it, it, mm-hmm. it's just i mean humanity as a as a whole just we haven't created that kind of technology yet it's just impossible and while twitter is much smaller it's still very hard to moderate that kind of stuff so their moderation mm-hmm. systems are imperfect and that's what people have an argument about against those you know systems so they move over federa- federated media for federated social media and it takes it from that extreme of moderation and imperfect moderation to no moderation at all, you mm-hmm. know. And mm-hmm. that mean, and I mean, while anarchy, fucking bug, uh, while anarchy <laughs> sounds good, like a great idea, uh, it's not. No, no. <laughs> like it, all it does is allows a group of assholes to get together and start shouting at each other with one voice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That that's all the lack of moderation does and the, it doesn't solve the problem like i said it, it takes the imperfect moderation of the main social media networks and just removes it completely what we need is to figure out how to actually moderate a social network uh in a better way and the way to do it is through community moderation and i think that some federated media uh, uh servers and stuff like that do some community moderation uh but when you you get kicked off a server that has community moderation what do you do you just go create your own instance you haven't been banned from anything you just create your own instance and then you can do whatever you want you don't have to have moderation so uh well i think the uh like the sort of argument that i that, that i have towards it is even if federated social media was to become the standard there is going to be an economic incentive for companies to make it financially um in in unattainable for you to manage your own instance um and create like a a viable alternative as soon as mastodon becomes the number one platform there's going to be enough business incentive that there will become a a a future in which, yeah, Mastodon might be the future, but there's so many centralized instances on it, and running your own instance is so economically expensive, you can't afford to do it. Yeah, the the community aspect or the corporation aspect of it is because you you know that that would happen. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and it would probably be the same companies that are behind the social media networks now. So Facebook would yep. start their own server and Twitter would start their own server. And because those companies are so popular, people would be on those servers the most. You know exactly. What I mean? So yep. you'd just end up with the same thing you have now. Mm-hmm. Um, it Again, like that, that's why to me, federated social media doesn't, that's why I say it, it doesn't address the problem with social media because we all know there's a problem, but I, to me, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the moderation of social media. Like, yes, y- yes, people do get banned and yes, Twitter is, it has their own bias and takes it out against people, but you're going to see that anywhere you go unless you go full anarchy. Mm. And so the, the middle road is us is how do you have a platform where you have complete levels of different moderation for whoever you are um and 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 how do you balance that or i i think the more relevant question is is it even feasible to have a platform or not feasible but is it um is it actually what we want to have a platform where um, people who rightly get banned off of other platforms, should there be a place for literally anyone to have a conversation? Should there literally be a place for people who are very for violence to get together and talk about how to enact violence? Yeah. I don't really know the answer to the question, right? <laughs> the real question is, do we want social media at all? <laughs> I, I think for me the- personally, I can go ahead and answer that. No. Uh, no. I I don't like it. I hardly ever use it if I have to use it. Yeah. See, the thing is, I would, I know that I'd miss it now. See, like I use Facebook a lot less now that I'm not in the groups that I was in before, uh, and maybe I visit it once a day, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe once every other day. And really, it's for like, you know, half a minute, maybe a minute or something. I go make sure I don't have any notifications from family or whatever, and then I leave it behind. I'm on Twitter all the time because I have TweetDeck open up in the background. Um, but again, I, the way I use it is just to find, you know, information that's been tweeted out. Like sometimes it's links to news or whatever. Um, well, as somebody who quit, I will go ahead and tell you it's, it's more of, it's not really that you'll miss it. Um, but you, for the first few days after it's very, it's almost like you miss it because you've built a habit of, of being there. It's like but switching from, keyboard layout. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, uh, it's just not as long. Like you're not going to spend two months getting getting over the hump of being over social media. Um, yeah. But I, to me, I think the most worthwhile um, thing about being off of social media is being around other people and them talking about like what's what's what they're fired up about and hearing them talk about just something that has nothing to do with them. It affects them in absolutely no way, but they read it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, and they're really upset. And you're like, I have. I didn't even know. I hadn't heard that. Like, I I could care less. That doesn't affect me. Yeah. It, it's a nice feeling. Um, but then again, I understand that social media is valuable for quite a few people out there. It wouldn't be being used if it wasn't. Yeah, as long so. as... I think social media is fine as long as you don't become obsessed with it. When I, when I first started using Twitter in 2009, I was obsessed with it. Like, <laughs> like and, and for stupid reasons, like... I, I got really pissed off if I missed anybody's tweet that I followed. And I followed like a thousand people. Like, so I had Oof. to find, find a certain uh, Twitter client that would always remember your position from wherever you were at so that I could always go through and read each and every tweet that I was on. Uh, luckily, I got past that point. <laughs> I feel like eventually, like, I can't continue on with this anymore. Uh, now, if I miss a tweet, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, it will get mm. tweeted again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if, if it was really news or something that I need to know, I'll just find it on a news channel. Um, not that they'll tell me the truth on those either. So, and, okay. and, the, and that is one of the, to me, I think the dangerous parts of, uh, of social media is you start to believe all of the news that you've heard on social media. If you weren't on social media and didn't hear about it, you'd be missing out. Um, there's so much stuff that goes on on, on like news wise that goes on on social media that I don't hear about. And I'm, when I do hear about it, I'm like, oh, that's cool. But I'm not ever upset that like, oh, darn, like I wish I was on social media so I would have known about it sooner. Because the yeah. real big stuff, like, I don't know, Valve announcing a Steam Deck, like you hear about that stuff yeah. other places. Anyway. That's why that's why The Verge exists. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so that is uh, the end of that topic. Um, it really went off into some 
controversial place so I'm probably going to get canceled. Um, <laughs> People come hit me up too. They'll be like, hey, you need to stop sharing your opinions, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't go woke on us. It's okay. Um, anyways, uh, so let's, every week we choose uh, picks of the week. So we go through and we can choose an application, a website, or whatever. So Tyler... Why don't you tell us what your pick of the week is? Mine is Amphora. It is an absolutely fantastic, and I do mean fantastic, text-based browser for Gemini. Um, If you're unfamiliar with Gemini, Gemini is a a web protocol similar to uh, HTTP and, you know, the World Wide Web. Uh, However, it's uh, plain text, and uh, it uses a sort of stripped-down version of Markdown. Um, Very simplistic. It took me... I think altogether 30 minutes to set up a Gemini capsule, uh, which is uh, on Gemini websites are called capsules. Um, so it took me about 30 minutes to set up a Gemini capsule using DigitalOcean. It is soup. I mean, it takes absolutely no time to understand how it works. Um, if you're familiar with how to make an index page uh, or like me- if you understand building websites, even in the slightest, it is Super simple. You probably won't even have to learn anything to get a Gemini capsule set up. And um, overall, Gemini has been a joy to use. And Amphora, it's really easy. The config file for it, super simple. If you want to do a little tweaking, um, get rid of a few things, change colors and stuff like that, um, uh, that config file is very, very simple and straightforward. And Amphora is not slow by any means. So... Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Sounds interesting. Uh, I thought about doing a Gemini thing for the, sh- the website that I'm promising forever, uh, mm-hmm. but I'd be worried that like most people couldn't get to it. You know, because most people don't use Gemini. But uh, Hex DSL has gone through and um, made it so his Gemini stuff gets automatically synced to his actual website. They're basically yep. the same. So mm-hmm. uh, I wish he would do a tutorial on how he did that. Because I would um, love to do that. I, I don't know that he's done a tutorial on it, but I know there's if you search his if you search hex DSL in Gemini in one of the videos him and Drew are talking about how he did it, and I'm pretty sure Drew was the one who wrote the script for him that takes care of it, and as far as I know that is available on his um, repositories. I'll have to take a look at that because that would be really cool to be able to manage it through Gemini, but just have it pushed up to uh, uh, the the actual website uh okay so uh as you heard at the beginning of the uh episode i have switched to a different keyboard layout and that means i have been doing typing tests like crazy and uh there are several of those that i've been using i mentioned one before it's called key br uh that one's good but it's weird and it's specifically aimed towards people who have switched to a different keyboard layout so that you can actually go through and train your muscle memory to learn where the keys are. Um, if you're just looking for regular typing tests, there are a couple that are really good. So 10fastfingers.com is a uh, it's just a typing test. It's literally all there is. They do they do competitions and stuff like that. You can make it as complicated as you want. You can change your time and stuff like that. Uh, it's not the best designed or whatever. But if you're if you want to be where there's a whole bunch of people and you want the social aspect of it. 10 Fast Fingers is really good. If you're more interested in open source, monkeytype.com is open source, is much better designed, and uh, is awesome. I mean, it's really, really good. It doesn't, it has a social aspect of it, kind of like where it has leaderboards and whatever, but it doesn't have the competition aspect of uh, 10 Fast Fingers that you can actually get into. Now, there are a ton of other ones that are way more competitive than 10 Fast Fingers, but Monkey Type, if you're just looking for uh, uh, a typing test that has a ton of different options, like, you know, putting the speed on the screen, putting your errors on the screen, having a like a, a, a ghost racer, so that if you've used it long enough, they'll actually have your your average time racing you is really cool. Ooh, um, it, it has okay. a, it has a ton of different things. You go on there, you press the escape key and it'll just show you a ton of different themes and stuff that you can change. Uh, just remember you're there to practice typing, not mess around with the themes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I have a very hard time, uh, actually remembering that because, you know, I like to change themes a lot. That That's the thing that happens. 
I, I like that you're one of those people who talks about that openly. Like, yes, that is something that most most of us have to struggle with. I feel like I, if you're using a tiling window manager, you are that type of person who likes to tinker around with themes. Yeah, like I, I talk like I'm talking about the video that we'll post it here on Thursday. Uh, I have an obsession with changing themes and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I always have. All right, so here's a story. Um, settle down. Story time with Uncle Matt. Uh, <laughs> When I first got started in stuff, like on the internet, wanting to be like a entrepreneur or whatever, which is, you know, whatever, uh, <laughs> I started a tech blog, like a tech news blog, like, cause I mean, that's what you do when you're, I don't know, in college and you decide you want to make money on the internet. Uh, and, um, I started with VulcanTechOnline.com. <laughs> okay. Horrible no name, way. but you know, whatever. Uh, it, it did not succeed obviously it's not around today you can't i don't know i don't even even lo- no longer own the 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 domain uh but i changed that was on squarespace and i changed the theme like every day like, i mean literally mm-hmm. i changed the theme every day because it was there's was always something new about that so uh then i moved over to wordpress and and moved to uh tech we i moved it to tech t3 the number three kd and that was actually fairly successful. Like, it got up to, like, a 1,000 views a day or whatever. It was really good. But <laughs> the problem with with WordPress, if you change the theme too often, it's a database-based uh, theme or a, a database-based system. And the more times you tweak a database, the more often you're likely to come up, you know, with data loss. Like, so, mm-hmm. like, there were multiple times where I just lost the entire website because I was... <laughs> Like, like there's this place called Envato. It's like a, it's called Theme Forest, and it has just hundreds of thousands of themes for WordPress. And like that is like catnip for cat for me because <laughs> I was like I was changing those themes all the time. And 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 the, by the, by that time I'd actually been successful enough where I had made some friends, and they were there like blogging with me, and they get so pissed off every time I lost all their articles and stuff like that because. <laughs> Dude, I'm, uh, I'm almost crying. I'm just imagining you losing all the website's data, and then just a new theme, like a new theme on your screen. You're like, ah, but it's worth it. The, the the thing was, as a young computer user, I was not good at backing up data on a server, uh, as we all are. So, um, when a theme inevitably broke WordPress, I lost everything, and I had to start over again. And I, I like. The thing is, I still do a podcast that I've been doing since 2009 with one of the guys that I met through blogging, tech blogging. Okay. And if he were here right now, he could tell you how many times I changed the themes. Like, it was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And the thing is with that, with that podcast is I've changed the name of that podcast at least four times. <laughs> uh, we started off with Tech Weekly, so that was for the actual tech news. And we did, like, the tech news for the, the website. And then we changed to the three cast. And then we went to um, Never Safe for Work, um, which I really like that name. I should have stuck with that name. It didn't. It didn't mm-hmm. last very long. And then I moved to the Untitled Show. Just yeah, like <laughs> another one. <laughs> and then we went back to the Three Cats, which is what we are now. Like we, ha- I haven't changed it in years, but I've been tempted. Uh, so <laughs> d- just be prepared, Tyler. If you stick around long enough, the name of this podcast shall change because <laughs> I, I don't have the attention span for you know not changing things. Like, like I've thought about changing the like the themes of my thumbnails five or six times, and I have. Like, if you go mm-hmm. through the the thumbnails on the channel, you'll notice that they change a lot because I ch- so... like I'm, I'm always doing something new. With that kind of stuff, I don't have, I, I can't stick with anything. I'm in the, the hyperactive child. So it's, 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 <laughs> it, it, it's one of those personality flaws. And I, I think that's why actually writing is so good for me because it allows me to focus my uh, attention on changing things and, and retheming stuff to much my personal stuff without having to mess around with the important things like the, the podcast name or the channel mm-hmm. theme, you know what I mean? Because yep. if I didn't have window manager, stupid bug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if I didn't have the ability to write and theme my stuff, I'd probably be changing the background to the podcast and stuff like that mm-hmm. all the time. I mean, it would it, yep. it'd be so stupid. <laughs> Okay, so that is it for us this time. Next week, next week, 
You'll definitely want to tune in because we're having a bash challenge. Tyler and I have mm-hmm. gone through and we have written or are writing in my case. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going back through and redoing mine. Uh, I was uh, doing stuff I found out real wrong. It was working, but it's not the way you should be doing okay, stuff. Okay, so I, I just want to put this out there. You're going to kick my ass in terms of this because when we're, when we're done, I'm putting up a poll on the community page and people are going to vote on the winner. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, so uh, my idea is so simplistic a monkey could do it, and I think I've already broken one of the rules. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, the stupid thing is, friends, I'm the one that came up with the fucking rules. <laughs> so it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, so make sure you tune in for that. That's going to be awesome. That's episode 50 of the Linux cast. And... Which is just, I mean, mind-bogglingly insane. And you wouldn't think so, so because my other podcast has done 500 episodes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> like, we've done 500 episodes of the other one, so I wouldn't think 50 was much. We've been doing that other one since 2009. And this one here, since 2017, the Linux cast has existed. Now, there was a whole year there where I didn't do any episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was my friend Ricky. We started it because he's like a Linux nerd just like me. And it was good. Um, but I think... The production values have gone up quite a bit. So, uh, make sure you turn in next week for episode 50. It's going to be really exciting. We still have to figure out how we're actually going to be showing each other the, the scripts and stuff like that. So, well, Tyler and I will probably be here for two hours next week trying to figure out how to do this. And just uh, to go ahead and prep everyone for that next week uh, video, just so you know, behind me, this green screen is going to be gone. I'm getting... Uh, it's a tax-free weekend, so I'm going and getting a whole new desk, and uh, I'm going to get some accent lighting and uh, put some stuff back here to sort of represent the channel. So this whole b- behind me is going to change for that, too, just so everyone doesn't hop in. It's like, holy crap, what has changed? There's something very different <laughs> about the background. He's going to look way, way more professional than I am because I don't have room for a green screen back here. I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's no way for there's no place for a green screen in my room. Anyways, uh, so that is it for us this time. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Uh, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Sven, East Coast Web, Donnie, Chris, Kell of Devils, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, American Camp. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week. Say ya. Uh...